So I'm Molly, um, and I work at a company called Quip. It's spelled Q-U-I-P, just for all of you that want to go Google it. Um, Quip, I'll explain a little bit more about what we do. Um, Quip is basically, our long-term goal is more or less to do what Microsoft Office did for the PC era. We want to do that for the tablet and mobile era. Um, I know, Outlook guys, earmuffs, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, it's like somebody's bending everyone every time. Don't worry about us, we're tiny. Um, <laughs> So tablets, obviously one of the biggest sort of computing revolutions that's happening right now. Um, very not well understood. Certainly more of a consumption device for most people at this point than a production device. Um, and so part of our, our goal is to actually figure out what does mobile productivity mean on a touch screen. Um, so we are, for the next five years, I think what tablets really mean is that people are going to be carrying three devices. They're going to have a laptop, a tablet, and a phone. And so Quip actually works in a desktop browser um, on any iOS device and also on any Android device. Um, so you can literally have the same information across the board. Um, so we launched about seven months ago, and I'm just going to show you a little bit about how Quip works. Sorry, it's like a little bit funny, but this is on an iPad. So the right side is what we call the desktop, which is more or less like your stuff, and we'll leave it there. And the left side is what we call the inbox. So Quip is extremely good at two things. We are extremely good at mobile which I'll explain, but all of this works offline, just so you know. Um, and we are extremely good at collaboration. So what we try to do is take all that communication that happens around documents, that happens around sort of elements within a, like a workplace, and basically merge it into one application, which I'll show you. So the left side is all the recent stuff that has happened. Um, and we have lots of like modern features built in, like presence. Um, I, uh, CEO and founder at Brett Taylor is online right now. You can see all of our customers that are online. Tells you what kind of device they're on. Um, these are just like my contacts on Quip. Um, so I'll show you. What we launched is more or less um, like a document. Um, just scrolling to the top here so I can show you how this works. So the right side of a Quip document is basically like the final version in Word. So if you accept all track changes, um, and Quip documents are like meant to be really simple, really beautiful, and reformat for any screen size. So it ideally looks exactly the same on your phone as it does on your desktop. You can embed images, and I'll show you some other stuff you can embed later on. So if the right side is the final document, the left side is what we call the document thread. And it is a, sort of a mix of what we call diffs, which most people would call track changes, um, and messages. So this is Anna wrote this blog post, and she added Josh and me. Um, and she was like messaging us, and then Josh was like, oh, thanks, Anna, this looks awesome, I'll take a look. And it sent a really long conversation, oh my god, it's such a long conversation. Okay, so then Anna went back and rewrote everything, because Josh told her it was terrible. And <laughs> eventually, we'll get down to a place, ah, here we go, sorry. So this is like a lot more of a typical kind of, sorry, hold on. Um, so more of like a typical track changes when you can start to see additions, edits, etc. from Anna. Um, and Josh, and then you'll start to see we add the rest of the engineering team on. Josh is like, how about if we use these screenshots? So you can basically just see all of this would normally be an email. Um, so normally what happens when you like have a document, whether it's in Google Docs or Microsoft Word, is like you email 17 people and you're like, hey, can you guys take a look at this? No one responds. You're like, you're like hey guys, can you take a look at this, please? And then finally like one person sends you back another version and then you have to go back and merge the versions together. What happens when you add collaborators onto a Quip document is all of the people get either a push notification or an email that says, Molly just shared a document with you. When you open my document, I get a push notification that says, Josh just opened your document. And then I can hop in there and you'll see we integrate things like read receipts, which are obviously very well known. So at the bottom, it tells you who read the last edit that you did as well. So we actually don't use email as a company. We run our whole company on this. Um, and it literally has replaced all of our internal communication. I'll show you just a little bit more about kinds of documents that you wouldn't necessarily think of as documents. So there's lots of task management apps out there. Definitely not trying to be anything like them, but a lot of people just want a checklist. Um, this is a roadmap that we did about two months ago. We like, most people don't print out documents anymore. They use them to just like write and, and put down thoughts and maybe collaborate with someone. Um, so. <coughs> We are super interested in kind of the interactive element of documents um, and the interactive space. So checklist, great example. Document thread becomes more or less like an example of what everyone, a sort of a list of what everyone has done recently. And then the other, we embed a lot of stuff, but one of the things we do do, this is usually a question, um, very rudimentary at this point, but is tables. 
this is more like a word table than a spreadsheet, so don't get excited. Um, but it's basically just like uh, a really easy way to see kind of data, tabular data, structured data. Um, this is just us like cataloging everything in January. Um, Molly, I think. Yeah. Number two questions then. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> What can I answer? Nothing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Great job. Up in the back. So are you using some kind of markup format or using HTML or some other document to kind of your live way of doing it? Absolutely. So uh, the question was, what is um, our formatting for how you input into documents? Is that a reasonable rephrasing? OK. So um, we have our own editor that we built from scratch. Um, it's We don't input markup, but we do export markup, which has been a big request. Um, so if you copy and paste out of a quick document into a uh, plain text editor, it exports as markup. Um, and like our formatting, uh, I can show you just really quickly. So like when you start writing, the keyboard pops up, and our formatting is actually just this at the top. So there's very limited formatting in Cope. You can basically change a header size. Um, you can uh, make it back into a normal paragraph, and you can do a list, a bulleted list, a numbered list, and a checklist. So the formatting is intentionally, and I just changed our blog post, which is fine. Um, so it's intentionally very limited, because we want the documents to be really beautiful on all devices. Um, but we'll probably add more formatting over time. Yeah? Where do these documents physically reside that everybody's accessing, and, and what kind of security controls do you have around Absolutely. So they, I mean, more or less, like, it's extremely complicated, but they more or less reside in the cloud is probably the way to think about it that like you know people talk about. Um, and it's possible to export them if you want to into PDF and you can copy and paste for sure. Um, our security is sort of best in class like with every other cloud sort of service in the world. Um, and we're based on Amazon Web Services. Um, and I'm happy to give you lots of more answers about security, but you would hear from us exactly what you would hear from every other sort of major uh, SaaS product. We're free to consumers, but we consider ourselves a SaaS product from a security perspective, so we're serving businesses. Um, so encrypted on REST, blah, 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 blah. Yeah? So you mentioned this thing works offline as well. It does. Um, so when you I make changes... To make it blow and, your mind. Yeah, totally. So if you make changes and somebody else makes the same change, what determines who gets that change in place? Absolutely. So this is all offline right now. You can just like mine. Your mind can be blown. Um, so the way we manage conflicts, which is more or less what you're asking. So one thing that will never happen in a Quip document is you will never end up with two versions of the document, which is what happens in like Dropbox and Evernote. When they have a syncing problem, they just are like, it's your problem. Here's two documents. Um, for us, we, we don't have syncing problems. Um, the worst thing you will ever see happen in Quip is if two people are editing offline and they are editing exactly the same sentence, literally word by word, what we will do when they both, when one of them goes back online, the other one goes back online, we'll just put the words next to each other. But it only happens, so uh, very briefly, we basically, we don't actually manage entire documents. Like a unit for us is not a document, it's a paragraph and actually a sentence. And each paragraph has a unique identifier. And so we're able, when we send data back, we don't send the whole document back, we just send the paragraph back. So you could be editing a paragraph and I could move that paragraph to a different part of the document while you're offline and we would be able to merge those changes back together with no conflicts because we know your word was inside my paragraph. Does that make sense? Yep, kind of. Yeah, we've never actually had a user run into a conflict problem. We have them once in a while, but it's it's very it's very rare. How much time should I? Uh, one more question. Okay, awesome. Uh, what do you have as far as, far as uh, data import, either either from other 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 other? other, other Thank you for asking uh, that question. Or, or, or from, or from, 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 from email, for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So this is something we launched in November, and we're planning on building out. Email is coming, so we really want to allow you to forward an email into Quip. Um, and actually, ideally, what we'll be able to do is take an email that has five people on it, have you forward it into Quip, and all of those people will become collaborators on the document. Stay tuned. Um, but right now, you can import from all of these services into Quip. Um, you can choose either to link your entire Google Drive, your entire Dropbox, or just import a selected file. The other thing you can do on iPad is um, if you get an attachment in Mail.app, so their main Mail app, you can press and hold and open it in Quip, and we'll automatically convert it. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Quip.